Before we start creating our questions for our survey, we really need to know and think about what kind of answers we're going to be getting in response to those questions. The type of answers that you can select is found underneath the question box in the new question window. I'll start from single line of text and then work my way down. So first I'll go ahead and click on single line of text and that's going to refresh my window because that has different options than say multiple lines of text or choice or ratings. So for here a single line of text this is good for brief answers and you can set up a maximum number of characters to 255. If I scroll down a bit you can see also that you can choose whether or not to require a response for this or to enforce unique values. If the user is going to answer this in a very common way that you think most users will, you can even set up a default value. The other sections that we have in this window are for branching logic, which again we'll go over in a later lecture, and column validation, which we'll go over at the end of this section. Next we have multiple lines of text, and this is good for longer answers. And this field can hold up to two gigabytes of character data, and that's well over a billion characters. When I scroll down, you can see you can also choose to require this answer. You can choose the number of lines that will show up for editing, and you can also choose if you want plain text or enhanced text, which will allow the users to put in pictures, tables, and even hyperlinks. With an answer type of choice, you're actually providing the answers to the users and they'll select from those answers. And these answers can be displayed in a drop-down list next to checkboxes or radio buttons. In the middle of my screen, you'll see the text box where you can put in the answers that you want the users to select from. Each answer, of course, has to be on its own separate line. And if you think the user might give an answer that you haven't provided, you can also allow for fill-in choices. There's also an option for default values. Rating scale is next, and this is also called a Likert scale. So these would be for questions that would start on a scale of one to 10, how would you, or do you, or how do you feel about whatever. And you can set the range. I'll scroll down a bit so you can see. You can set the range anywhere from a scale of zero to 20 and you can specify the text that's associated with zero, like strongly disagree, or the text that's associated with a higher number, like strongly agree. You can even specify the text for the midpoint. Maybe you would have something just like agree. And if you feel like the answers aren't applicable for your users, there's also the option to show in A. And that text you can change as well. Number is next. And as you can imagine, you would use this answer type to, well, get numbers. When I scroll down, you can see there's a choice to enforce unique values. And if you're looking for a range of numbers, you can set the minimum and the maximum number that's allowed. You can choose whether or not to show decimal places and how many spaces to the right of the decimal place you want. And you can also choose a default value or if you need this to be a percentage, you just check the box for show as percentage. Currency is used for monetary values. And like number, you can select a minimum and a maximum value and the number of decimal places. You can also select the currency format to be used. The date and time type is used to answer questions that would show as just date only or date and time, whether you want a standard format or there's a new format called friendly, which allows you to display the dates in very friendly terms like tomorrow, yesterday, or a few seconds ago. You can choose a default value or a calculated value. Lookup is kind of like choice, where the answers are provided for the user. These answers, however, are not typed in by you. They're actually pulled from an existing list that's already on your site. Then there's yes, no, and with this answer type, a checkbox is displayed. If the user checks the box, that means yes, and an unchecked box means no. With person or group, the user can select single or multiple users or groups that have access to your site. And when I scroll down, you can see that you can even show this field with the presence indicator 
or a picture or their email or a name. There's a lot of choices here. Next, I have external data. And here, users are actually routed to an application outside of SharePoint to select their choice. The page separator is not really an answer type. This will give you a page break in your survey, displaying the following questions on a new page or window. So now you know a little bit more about the answer types for your questions. Make sure you have all that information in mind when you're creating your new questions. Also, I've added a document to the resources section for this lecture that goes over the different answer types for you.